Hey folks, Adam McIntosh here. Uh, first of all, Happy New Year. Uh, second of all, I am a little bit sick, unfortunately, so please excuse my scuffed appearance and throat. I will try not to cough and sniff through this entire video, but I did want to bring you guys a video today. Uh, I figure it's, it's been Christmas and New Year's, so maybe some of you have new cameras, or maybe some of you have made resolutions to shoot more photography. So I wanted to bring you my five favorite tips for beginning photography. Now, of course, one of the overrolling tips is just to shoot, uh, whether it's inside the house, in your backyard, or out on the street. The fastest way you're gonna learn is just by using your camera, but I didn't really wanna make it one of the key points today. You've probably already heard it before, so let's move on from there and right into our first tip. So in no particular order, our first tip is to focus on the eyes. Now what I mean by this is that a lot of you are gonna start out probably shooting photos of people, maybe some of your friends, maybe even of yourself. When you focus on the eyes, it engages you with the subject. Now this kind of applies to like a lot of things. Whatever is sort of in focus will dictate what the viewer sees as the important part of the image. Now this doesn't have to be people, but I'll use this example for today. I mentioned this tip because I know that when I started photography, I didn't know this right at the beginning and I'm sure my focus points were all over the place. So here I shot a slightly exaggerated example just to kind of point out uh, what focusing on the eyes can really do for you. So here in the first shot, you can see the image looks fine. The focus is on the eyes. Now in the second image here, you can see that the focus point is actually somewhere up towards the back of the brim of the hat. Now, like I say, it is slightly exaggerated, but now that you see the comparison of the two, hopefully you can see the importance of having your focus points in the right place. This will become more obvious when shooting at shallow depths of field, AKA low aperture numbers. When shooting at extremely low depths of field, you can even start to tell the difference if your focus point happened to be on the nose of your subject. By the time you get to the eyes, the eyes are already starting to feel blurred out and out of focus. Now this might not be that noticeable in camera, but when you get it out of the camera and start to zoom in, or if you were to blow your image up, that would become far more obvious. Focusing on the eyes in a portrait, for example, will also make the viewer more engaged to your subject. Now, like most rules, there are creative ways to break this rule. But for today, we'll stick to the basics and we'll consider that what is in focus is going to be the importance of your shot. So that's tip number one. Focus on the eyes or have your focus points on what you want to be the focus point of your image. Now, moving right on to our next tip, and that's to consider your backgrounds. Now given a range of situations, there is a lot that could come into play here, but I'll try to break down a few examples of things you might want to consider. Obviously, we want the focus of our image to be considered first and foremost, but what is in the background can really make or break your shot. Here are two examples from the same photo shoot, where in one image, I considered the background more than I did in the other shot. Now you don't notice it too much, but subconsciously, one of them works more compositionally, and in fact, I use the power lines in the background from the railway to frame my subject rather than conflict with her. This can help with composition, and it also can help to keep from distracting from the focus of your image. A few things you might also have to consider are not only structures, but it might be things like distracting graffiti behind you if you're shooting a portrait up against a wall, for example. It might be tourists in the background of a shot. There are many things to consider, obviously given the wide range of environments that are in your shot, but just think about your background as much as you would like to think about the focus of your image. There are many examples I can make given the wide range of situations that you could be shooting in, but just try to consider your background, if it's possible, to use your background in a way that accentuates your focus rather than conflicts with it. And on to our next tip is subtlety is key. Now this is something I wish that I knew when I first started photography. It's something that I guess all of us are a little bit partial to. You kind of want to go overboard with things a little bit. At least I know I do. And it's something that I still now take into consideration after shooting for a while is that everything I do, I kind of just dial back a little bit. Now what this can help with is sort of your work not dating as fast. I found that things that I shot that I overly did and it might have just been in editing and editing, if we still have the raw files, we can obviously kind of reverse or re-edit. But 
what I was finding is that six months later I was looking back at my work and being kind of disgusted on how much I really kind of overdid things. Now here are two examples I've used with editing techniques. Now as beginners I know that we might not all be at the editing process yet, maybe you're just still shooting out of camera, but here's this one example that I would like to give in the kind of overdoing of things. Now I've exaggerated things a little bit again, but I just wanted to point out you know, how things can be a little bit over stylized. And to be honest, maybe it's not even that exaggerated. If I look at my editing from when I first started shooting photography, it might even be more exaggerated than this. Now we might not all be at the editing process yet, but it doesn't just apply to editing. Editing in fact, isn't such a bad thing. Like I said, if you have the raw files, editing can be redone months or even years later, if you like. Things shot in camera, however, can't. So consider when doing things like theme photo shoots, maybe it's a portrait session, to just not go too overboard with styling and themes and things like that. Maybe then your work will stay a little bit more timeless and you'll be able to hold on to images you like for a little longer. Now on to our next tip is when in doubt, use the rule of thirds. Now the rule of thirds is a composition technique or theory that has been around for a very, very long time. And because it's been around for a very, very long time, there is a lot of information out there on the rule of thirds. Now I won't break down all of the details in this video today, but essentially it's a few basic guidelines that you can use in your images that seem to be aesthetically pleasing to most people. I would recommend checking out some basic grids and consider using those if you're wondering why your images aren't looking as great as you would like them to. Again, like all rules, there are ways to creatively break these rules, and that's something I might go into a video later on. Learning the rule of thirds and some basic composition techniques really taught me how to make my images more aesthetically pleasing. So I would recommend tracking something down, another video here on YouTube, or some information online, view the basic grids, and try to use those in your own photography. And if you're feeling adventurous, try to find out ways to break those two, and find out what you do and don't like. And now for our fifth and final tip, is find a community to critique your work. Now that community could just be one of your friends, could be a few of your friends, or it could be one of the many communities online. Of course, finding constructive criticism online isn't always easy, but if you approach it with a little bit of a thicker skin, you should be able to glean some good information from it. Finding a place where you can ask questions from people possibly with a little bit more experience can help you learn a hell of a lot faster. It's also a great way to consider how other people work. In saying that, there are no rules. Please take everything with a grain of salt, consider what somebody is saying, but don't take it as gospel. And that, my friends, brings us to the end of the video. These have been a few of my favorite tips for beginning photography. And there were a few things that I wish that I knew when I first started. I hope you found the video useful. I hope you are able to apply some of this to your own photography and it helps you out. If you like the video, you have any suggestions, things you would like to see, comment section down below. Please feel free to use it. Feel free to DM me on Instagram or anything like that. Those links are down below. And if you want to go that extra mile, leaving a like, share or subscribe for the video would be amazing. Thanks for watching and happy shooting. Peace.